The Buddha compares coming into meditation, coming into concentration, to leaving your home and going into the wilderness. Of course, there are lots of different ways that people go into the wilderness. Once I was on a hike in Zion, going up to Angel's Landing. There weren't that many people on the trail that day, but there was one point where you could hear a group of people coming down from the other direction, talking very loudly. And even before I saw them, I knew where they worked. They worked in a modeling and acting agency in Los Angeles, in their talking shop. That's one way to go into the wilderness. Just carry all your affairs into the wilderness. The other way is to realize that you're out of your home. The cares and concerns of home can be put aside. And the mind feels a certain lightness. You get a certain distance from your daily concerns. And that's the best way to approach the meditation. When you come into the concentration, get used to being still and learn how to appreciate stillness. We talked about in that chant just now, respect for concentration. This is a lot of it. Having some respect for the opportunity to let your mind be really still for a while, not being too great of a hurry to go someplace else, to get all those wonderful insights you've heard about. And that involves, of course, gaining some distance from your opinions, from your normal ways of thinking. You find that you settle down with the breath. Large parts, <coughs> large parts of the committee of the mind are not really here yet. They're still carrying on their conversations about home and work and whatever, assuming that you will give in after a while and forget about the breath. And you will, to begin with, but then you remember you're here not for that, you're here for gaining concentration, so you come back. And there'll be a battle for a while. This is why it's important to make the breath as comfortable as you can, as quickly as you can. Try to find a rhythm of breathing that feels really soothing and energizing and refreshing for the body. In the beginning, this may mean deep, long breathing to energize parts of the body that ordinarily aren't energized by the breath. And then when that gets tiresome, you can let the breath get shorter, more shallow. Find a rhythm that feels really good, so when the mind does wander away from the breath, you have something good to come back to. And each time you come back, try to make the breath even more comfortable. Ask yourself, what am I still lacking in terms of sense of ease, well-being, refreshment from the breath? Which part of the body is not getting any nourishment from the breath? Think about breathing there. Because what we're trying to do is gain a sense that living here in the wilderness is where you really want to stay. Because you want to get the perspective that comes from being away from your ordinary thoughts and concerns. So that your opinions don't loom so large. And then you can sort through them. But to begin with, you've got to develop this sense of foundation first. And take a real interest in what's involved in settling into the breath, settling into the body. Explore what your body feels like right now. We come to the meditation often with preconceived notions about where the breath comes in, where the breath goes out, where you are in your body, and how the different parts of the body connect. When we actually sit here for a while, you begin to see that things don't connect in quite the way you thought. And you'll have sensations of the breath in places that you hadn't imagined before, if you're open to being observant. This is why it's useful to read, say, John Lee's instructions on the breath to gain some idea of what's possible. And then to play with that, to explore how things feel for you. Years back, I was listening to someone who who's 
nephew, I guess it was, had Marfan syndrome, and he'd gone in even at a very early age. He was a teenager. He had to have an operation on his heart. And then as he came out of the operation, of course, they gave him painkiller, but the painkiller wasn't working. He was in a fair amount of pain. And one of my students, who also had Marfam's, went to visit him. She asked him about the symptoms of his pain, and he told her. And she said, breathe through your butt. And as the kid told me later, that really worked, imagining the breath coming in through there, something he'd never imagined before. And once he learned how to imagine that, he could imagine all kinds of other things, where the breath goes, comes in through your feet, comes in through your hands, comes through your eyes and your ears. And if you find that you do have chronic pain, you can use this as a topic to experiment with. When I was in the hospital with malaria years back, I found that breathing was becoming more and more laborious, because after all, the, the parasite was eating up my red blood cells. Not much, not much oxygen was getting to the to the muscles that were doing the breathing. I realized if I changed my mental picture of where the breath was coming in and how it was coming in, th the muscles that did the usual work for breathing got a chance to rest, and other muscles were able to, to pinch hit. And the breathing became a lot easier. So try to gain an interest in what it's like to inhabit your body, what it's like to really get a sense of how the energy flows in the body in ways that surprise you. This way it's like going into the wilderness and taking an interest in the trees around you, the plants around you. And you begin to forget the issues of home. And as you go through the trees and go through the plants and you come to the edge, say, of the Grand Canyon, the vastness of nature suddenly over overtakes you, and you realize how small and petty your normal daily concerns are. There will come times in the meditation when the concentration gets big. You finally settle down and there is a sense of ease. The breath energy is all connected in the body. And the constrictions you had on the awareness in the body begin to fall away. There's a sense of your mind filling the whole body, sometimes filling the whole room. And when you reach that, the thoughts that come through your mind seem so petty and so minor. Now there will come times when insights come in. But as we were saying today, the rule of thumb is if it's relevant to what you're doing right now, okay, apply it. In other words, you get a sudden insight into how you're focusing on the breath in a way that's not as skillful as it could be, or how you're coming back to the breath in a way that's putting too much pressure on it. Lots of details about what it means to settle into the body. And you can gain insight into how you relate to the breath energy. And you begin to see there are many levels of breath energy in the body. There's one that it's a very subtle breath, that as soon as you start to breathe in, the breath energy has already gone throughout the whole body. Then there's the other more obvious waves of energy that go through the body as you breathe in. But that first one is useful to get in, get in touch with. Or you begin to see that there are certain parts in the body where the, the impulse for the wave of energy going through the body, where those impulses begin. A slight tightening up happens there as you breathe in, and then it gets released as you breathe out. And you can ask yourself, if you've been here long enough and feel settled and secure enough in the body, what happens if you don't allow that pressure or tension of the in-breath to start there? What happens then? Things open up. You find that there's a level of energy in the body that's very still. It doesn't come in, doesn't go out. And you can stay there. And once the breath gets still like this, your sense of the body begins to dissolve until it's just a mist of little sensations. And you can think about the space between the sensations, and that space has no limit. 
So as you find, as you come into the wilderness, there's, there's lots to learn about. Little details about the animals and the trees, but also just the vastness of nature. So when you look at your thoughts as they may come passing through, you can just let them pass by. They're like clouds. Sometimes some committee members will say, well, ordinary thoughts are no longer of interest, and they'll try to come up with all kinds of other things. Either talk about how important it is that now that you've got some little free time here, think about this, you've got a plan for that, or here's a great insight that comes with lots of lights and colors. But again, if it's not really relevant to what you're doing right now, just let it go. If it's really important and really useful, it'll be there when you come out of the meditation. If it's not, you haven't been you haven't wasted any time over it. You haven't let it destroy your concentration. To take an interest in this space inside, this wilderness inside. And you can become a hunter and gatherer in the wilderness. As I said, the sense of wilderness as opposed to domestic life exists only for people who either are farmers or live in cities. Hunters and gatherers don't even have the concept of wilderness, because wilderness is where they hunt and where they gather, where they take their food, where they feel at home. So learn to be a hunter and gatherer inside. Be at home in this wilderness. Learn how to see the concerns of the village are small and petty. The concerns of the internet village, the concerns of your house village, the concerns of your work village, TV village, whatever, school village. See them as small. This has many advantages. One, you have a really good place to stay here, and two, the opinions that you churn up throughout the day. You gain a sense of distance from them. Helps loosen your attachment to the opinions that you begin to see are really not that useful, really not that helpful. And even the ones that are useful and helpful, you re realize that oh, there are times when you pick them up and times when you put them down. You don't need to carry them around all the time. You learn how to be at home here. And after all, right here, where you're seated, where the breath. It's where the Buddha was when he gained awakening. So you get to know this area really well. Because when he awakens, he's going to come for you. This is where it's going to happen.